Everything he is, everything he has done is found in his name. Wow. It's a description of all his, who he is. Let's say that name again, Jesus. Jesus. He shall save his people from their sins. Jesus. His name is Emmanuel. Jesus. So much is in that name. Praise God. We believe into the name. Praise God. And when you believe in the name, you come on the end of him in union with him. Hallelujah. Woo. So we're sitting, we see each other. I see you individually, but we're all in one body. We're in Christ. He fills heaven and he fills the earth. He's, he's, uh, <laughs> glory to God. It's, we're in the body of Christ. We make up his body. Hallelujah. His thoughts, his purposes, everything is revealed through you, through you, through you, you. Amen. Praise God. That song just blessed my heart. Jesus. Jesus. What a name. A name. A name. name. I want you to remember when you got born again. Did you, can you remember? Can you remember it? You went from dark to light. Darkness. You went from being a self-serving, heathen, rocker, drugger, whatever. Praise God. I went from being a little girl, tiny, without Jesus, and, and I became in Jesus. Every age needs Jesus. Amen. And he makes all the difference. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Everything that he is, he has given us. So we're not without him. We're not without everything he is. When we're born again, praise the Lord. And the one who communicates everything he is to us is so precious. And he is the Holy Spirit. He is the Holy Spirit. He brings everything to bear on our minds and our hearts, our emotions. That is true in Christ. Praise God. I love the words that Pat Harrison says. She said these, she quotes these, she says it often. She says this, I love the Holy Spirit. He is to me everything Jesus said he would be. Amen. Amen. Isn't that good? I love the Holy Spirit. He is to me everything that Jesus said he would be. Amen. So we're going to talk a little bit about the Holy Spirit here. And I know you're so familiar with with what the word of God says, with how you've experienced him. But guess what? We want more. <laughs> Say, I want more. <laughs> Praise God. I love my husband and I love being around him. But every day I want to see him again. I want to, you know, I want some more. More and more. I want to be close. And how much more it is with knowing Christ and so, um, so thankful for the Holy Spirit. He takes the things of Christ and makes them so real. So let's just, um, let's just dive in. Are you ready? Open your Bible there to John, the 14th chapter. And um, what the Holy, the Holy Spirit is, uh, Mark calls him liquid God. <laughs> liquid God, you know. And um, he's described by Jesus in John 14, John 15. And then let's just flip over just to save some time because Jesus is repeating himself. He knew he said it before. And he said it again. And he knew he was going to say it again. And why do you repeat things? For emphasis, right? And for explanation. And Jesus, being the most wonderful teacher, wanted to teach us who the Holy Spirit is. And um, so here he tells us in verse 7 of John, the 16th chapter, 
He says in the Amplified, however, I am telling you nothing but the truth when I say it is, it is profitable, good, expedient, advantageous for you that I go away. Because if I do not go away, the comforter, who is a counselor, helper, advocate, intercessor, strengthener, and standby will not come to you in close fellowship with you. But if I go away, I will send him to you to be in close fellowship with you. Praise God. And so the Holy Spirit is sent, Jesus said, to be in close fellowship with us all the time, 24-7. Praise God. Have you been uh, aware of him today? Have you called on him today? Amen. You say, Holy Ghost, I need you right now. Tell me about this or what, or whatever you need. But the Holy Spirit comes. He is a spirit of truth. He brings the thoughts of Christ and he makes them real to us. Praise the Lord. And he comes to be in close fellowship with us. Praise the Lord. And so um, in receiving everything that we need from the Lord, any kind of wisdom, knowledge, what am I going to do in the future, whatever. Holy Spirit has all the answers. How many go to your phone and Google stuff? You know, I'm going to get the answer for how many. I mean, we can be in conversation. We'll say, what is the capital? Oh, I got that. Or, you know, right? What kind of horse is that? Oh, I'm going to look at that. Oh, look at me. Yeah, it's right here. I love technology like that. How much more the Holy Ghost when you say, what about this? What about that? He has the answer right there, right there. And it's not far away because he's on the inside. And he's all the information we need. But if we are like uh, last night, I left my phone in the car. And I was just having a fit looking for that phone. Right? You got to have your phone, right? So, um, but... Finally, I found it. It was there all the time. It was there all the time. And it was in the car. And I got it out. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But it, it was, the battery was way down to 11%. 11%. So what's the first thing you're going to do? This thing is not going to be helpful at all if it's not charged up. So we charge it right up. Get it in there. You know. How many do that? You do it every single day. Charge up. Yeah. Charge your phone. Plug it in at night. By morning time, it's good to go. Amen. And then what can you do with that phone? Man, there's, you can do so many things. You'll never run out of t- finding out new things, right? It's like my BMW car, right? I drive it. I put it in D, N, P. I turn the radio on. I turn on the, the uh, air conditioner. I do all that, but that car can drive itself just about. It can tell me this. It can tell me that it can do so much. I have not even tapped into. And I feel like Jesus is saying to the church, I sing of the Holy Ghost. You are just on the surface level. You're just barely wading into the waters of who he is and his great ability and everything he can teach us, show us, help us with. Praise God. He equips us with everything we need to have. Praise the Lord. He knows your past, your future. Come on. He knows all your future. Praise the Lord. And it's all good. So to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, We have to recognize him. Jesus said, recognize him. So how do I recognize Ty? She's standing right there. I go, hey, Ty, come on in. Just come on in. You you have a place right here. (laughs) So that's what you do. The Holy Ghost, you might, it's kind of like the wind. You recognize, oh, the Holy Ghost is doing something. Hey, Holy Ghost, what are you doing now? Come on in. Sit right here. Yeah. I need you <laughs> right on time. So you recognize the Holy Spirit. God. Amen. Okay, you're here. All right, your mind is going like we were talking yesterday about A.B. Simpson. He had symptoms of heart condition in his body. He was going on a mountain hike. He believed and he confessed that he was healed. Yeah. But now we got to put it to the test here. 
So all the while, there's like the wolf on this side and there's Jesus over here. And he found that when he paid attention to Jesus, then he was strengthened. So all the while, in our minds, there's this battle. These voices going, you can't do that. Don't you know what happened last time? The devil's mean. He's bigger. He's about to get you. You know, different voices that are just zooming all the time. All the time. But Paul te- teaches us to have the mind of the spirit. So to have the mind of the spirit, your spirit has to be stronger than your mind of the natural, right? So this, you guys know all these things, but we're just going to talk about them Amen. a little bit more. Because whatever you talk about, you're going to emphasize that. And then you're going to put some action to that and gain a benefit from, uh, right now, the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. When you sang, I just loved watching your mouth. Didn't you? Did you watch his mouth? It's like Floyd's mouth. Floyd's mouth is like that big. But that sound couldn't have come out without you open up your mouth. And there was some wind on the inside. You got some breath. That's what uh, a friend of mine always said. Breathe. Breathe when you're singing, you know, breathe. You got to get some wind, get something to support the sound. The Holy Spirit is the wind and he supports the sound, the spirit. He's called the spirit of faith. That's what Paul referred to in 2 Corinthians 4.13. Oh man, all these things are against me. I'm beat up, beat up, beat up, whatever. He was listing all his troubles and he says, but... We having the same spirit of faith. We believe that's on the inside. And therefore, take a breath. We speak. So you're connecting not to hear. Or hear this mind remembers events, words, pictures, right? All kinds of things. Images. But a spirit of faith is connected not here. It's connected to your spirit. Hallelujah. And from there comes a sound of faith. And that sound of faith, we were talking about Jesus yesterday. Commanded, he told us, he demonstrated speaking to mountains. Jesus didn't do it with mental strength. He did it with spiritual strength. And we do that We can do that same thing as we're strong spiritually. Amen. Can I hear it? Amen. 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 All right. So the things that uh, help us to be strong is to be staying filled with the Holy Spirit, having our minds renewed with the word of God, and then speaking. Everything is speaking. Yesterday, Mark gave such a great lesson on faith and speaking. Praise God. Thank God. (laughs) So uh, to speak, you got to have some wind. You have to take a breath. So if we were to sing a song in here and you all were the choir, I would go like this. And when I went like this, you would breathe. Okay, everybody, breathe. Ah, (laughs) whatever you can sing out. But there's a, a time when you take a breath when you get ready to speak the word. You say, okay, Holy Ghost, help me say this. Amen. So to be filled with the wind of the Holy Spirit, being filled with him, he gives you speaking ability. And you can speak with his mind down here. Amen. Now, also, you got to be filled. Uh, uh, the other day, my car got down to... 60 miles, 60 miles. That's not very far. I mean, I could still go. But it was in the red. Have you ever done that? How many have run out of gas? <laughs> what do you feel like when you run out of gas? Come on now. <laughs> what do you do when you run out of gas? Call for help. Call for help. <laughs> I mean, what if you were, I did this. I ran out of gas in the busiest street in our town. I mean, right there in the lane, the left lane of my car to drive. Out of gas, 
The steering wheel doesn't go anywhere. You can't do anything. You're out of gas. You've got to fill it up. And so you've got to get some help. And so when you come to church, you've got to fill it up. When you get in the Word, filling it up. We used to drive up to the gas station and just roll the window down and say, fill her up. Anybody that old? <laughs> fill her up. And they would, you know. And so there's a process of that gas coming. I'm getting real basic. And from the, the resource, through the nozzle, and into your tank. And there is a process of getting filled with the Holy Ghost when you get close and you say, okay, Holy Ghost, I am going to drink from you. I am going to let you fill me up. Hallelujah. On the inside. Fill her up. Fill her up. Amen. (laughs) Uh, Praise God. So we're staying strong in our spirits by being filled with the Holy Ghost. When I was in the hospital, um, after I had a seizure on Sunday night in church, they rushed me off to the hospital. Didn't tell Mark. He was still preaching until I was already in there. And, uh, but this is what happened. When I had that seizure, everything was gone. Mentally. Physically. But guess what never goes your spirit. Your spirit's connected to God. First Corinthians six seventeen. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. So even if your body is down, your mind is down, your soul, your emotions are down, your spirit can still receive the input from the Holy Ghost and the energy from him. That's where the energy comes from. (laughs) And when I opened my eyes, even before I opened my my eyes, this is what came to me from the Holy Ghost on the inside. A strong spirit of a man sustains him in his bodily pain or trouble. (laughs) Praise God. I heard that on the inside. And then I heard this. My eyes were closed. I was just... And I was just laying there. Himself took your infirmities and bore your sicknesses. You know what was talking? My spirit. It was charged. There was still a charge. Praise God. Himself took your infirmities. By his stripes you were healed. Praise God. And it felt to me like a, a river of living water. Like a fountain. Praise God. Ha, ha, ha. That's what you got on the inside, right? And it came up, and when I opened my eyes, I saw Mark, saw the doctor, saw the doctor with his clipboard going, looks like you have an inoperable brain tumor. (laughs) I heard those words, but already, see, the Holy Ghost, if you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you have the armor of the Holy Spirit. You're clothed. And so you have the shield of faith there. You have the sword of the spirit. You have the helmet of righteousness on. It's not something you did physically, but spiritually because of your union with Christ. Woo, he clothes you with himself and you can stand and keep on standing with that shield of faith. He said to me, the doctor said, you have an inoperable brain tumor. Those words came like this, like a fiery dart. But they hit this. It didn't penetrate. Praise God. Isn't that a great way to be? Amen. Fill with the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is the spirit of faith. And that faith always has words. So he always gives you something to say and something to think. Amen. Amen. So as I did that, my spirit was strong. And then, of course, you know the rest of the story. How Mark spoke to that tumor. (laughs) Ha ha. In the name of Jesus. And it began to melt down. But it melted down. On the way into surgery, when I started laughing, I believe that was it. That was the key. Because the Holy Ghost gave me that that prompt. Now laugh. Now laugh. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha. Let's just laugh. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha. I love to hear Pastor David laugh. (laughs) 
You can't help but hear it. Praise God. Let's laugh with Pastor David. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit himself, he's the one. Who is he? He's the one that was in creation. He was moving over the face of the deep. When God said, let there be light, he's the one that made it happen. He's the one that blew the wind that blew the Red Sea open. Come on. He's always in action. And he goes into action with our words of faith. Praise God. And it's always involved with the Holy Spirit. Woo. 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 <laughs> Praise God. So what we're going to do is very basic because um, the Holy Spirit is liquid God. That's what Mark says. And Jesus said in John 6, I mean, John 7, 37, he said, on the most important day of the feast, is there anybody thirsty? I'm paraphrasing. Let him come to me and drink. And out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. These are rivers that you connect when you start opening your mouth. Hallelujah. Filled with the Holy Ghost. There's, it's an endless supply of living water. And wherever the living water flows, Ezekiel 47 says, wherever those waters flow, come on, they come from the throne of God and they come down and they become a double river. And wherever they go, Ezekiel 47 says, there's healing. There's healing. There's deliverance. So what do you need? You need the waters. You need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You all know that. Praise God. But we are emphasizing that right now because God is doing something. Everything comes out of the Holy Ghost today. I was acknowledging the gifts of the Holy Ghost flow out of those rivers. Jesus said, not just one river. He said, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. So there's different expressions. You tap into all the gifts of the Holy Ghost right there. You tap into the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, long suffering. You got help, but right on the inside, praise God. You got the greater one on the inside. And so we're just going to drink a little bit this morning. Flip over there to Ephesians five, praise God, because guess what? I believe that when Mark comes, he's going to say some things that he didn't even think he was going to say because it's going to come out of Jesus, right? Jesus is a fountain of life. Amen. And I believe that you're going to hear things you weren't planning on hearing and that word's going to set you free. Praise God, because it's a truth. It'll make you free. Ha ha. Glory to God. In Ephesians 5, 18, you know that verse. What does it say? It says, don't get drunk with wine. (laughs) Wherein is this excess? That's pretty good, isn't it? But on the other hand, be filled with the spirit. How? By speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making a melody in your hearts, Unto the Lord. Hallelujah. What did we do when we were first in here this morning? Were we doing some singing? Singing. And what were we doing? We were drinking from the Holy Spirit. And as we did, we were being filled. Filled. I asked Pastor Terry, I said, did you get filled with the Holy Ghost again this morning? (laughs) Did you dance? (laughs) You did. You got up and danced. Did you sing a song? He sang songs. Do you know how Terry can get up here and do all that stuff? Because he does it all the time. Continually drinking, drinking, drinking. And you too. You know, if we stay filled, all those gifts start coming out. The knowledge of God and strength. Praise God, we're filled to running over. Jesus said, come to me and drink. Could you tell somebody, come to me and you can drink from me. I got enough. I'm overflowing. I got enough faith for you and me. 
Come on, you're overflowing with the Holy Ghost. So it's not just enough for you. Like Mark says, it's, uh, what does he say? <laughs> you got enough for yourself. You're, it's uh, like you have enough drugs for you and somebody else. What is that? <laughs> Possession with intent to distribute. <laughs> so you're filled with the Holy Ghost so much you got enough to pass it around, right? Hallelujah. Everybody's getting filled around me. Everybody's getting full of joy around me. Everybody's getting full of confidence in God healing in me. Praise God. It's in the atmosphere. We've got more than enough, more than enough. So Paul said, he taught us, he said, oh, come on, don't get drunk. Get filled with the Holy Ghost. And this is the way you do it. You start singing to each other. Mm. <laughs> Hallelujah. You come and you sing the name. Hallelujah. But that's what we did last night, wasn't it? And I saw people. I saw a teenager right there. And he, he wasn't that personality that would go like this. <laughs> but when he got filled with the Holy Ghost, he was just like that. What happened? He got saturated and filled. Praise God. So we cannot live in this world without being overflowing continually with the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. So uh, I have a little illustration here. Let me see what I can do here, past sister. Sister helper. <laughs> this is Kate Bentliff. What a wonderful girl. What a wonderful girl she is. <laughs> this is the Holy Ghost. Okay, stand back so people can see. There we go. This is the Holy Ghost. This is coming from Jesus. Okay. This is you. This is your vessel. And you're coming. You're starting to sing. You're saying, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Or you're praying in tongues. Come on. Jude 20 said, Ye beloved, building up yourselves. Come on, say it with me. On your most holy faith, praying in the Spirit. Amen. So you come into Jesus. John 7, 37, you're drinking. You're drinking. Hallelujah, we're singing. Oh, this is the day the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you full? Are we full? Okay, we're going to drink a little bit more. Sometimes in the morning you think, I'm just going to worship God for a little while and then I'm going to go on my, my way. No, you need to worship a little bit more. Hallelujah. And then you got to get somebody else involved. <laughs> Glory to God. Let's talk about Jesus. <laughs> Are you full? Are you full? Are you supposed to be filled to the brim? No, 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 no. Hallelujah. You gotta have a little more, a little more, a little more. Hallelujah. I need to drink. Ha, ha, ha. Hallelujah. I think I'm gonna dance a little bit. Keep on going. Ha, ha, ha. It's gonna get on me. It's gonna get on you, me. It's gonna get everywhere. We're gonna make a big mess of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Ha, ha, ha. I'm getting full of joy. Ha, ha. My faith is going up. Ha, ha. Anything is possible in this place. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I think I'm gonna go to work and act the same way I do in church. Ha, ha, ha. Glory to God. Anything is possible. Devils are afraid of me. How can a devil stay around this? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Ha, ha, ha. Praise God. Thank you. I think we'll stop right there. <laughs> <laughs> what is this conference called? The Awakening. The Awakening. You're coming awake, coming alive. Praise God. And how can you do that? By being filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of y'all came like a old dry sponge. I mean, have you tried to wipe up anything with a dry sponge? It don't work. God wants to use his church. But if we're all dry, we can't be used. This is just hard. Not useful. But when we're saturated in the Holy Ghost. Come hold this bowl up, sister. All right. Whatever's hard, maybe a hard heart. Maybe you've been wounded. 
Maybe, uh, you know, life is just dry, you know, we're in the desert. Hallelujah. Praise God. But get in the presence of God. Stay. Stay. Hallelujah. Saturate. And stay in his presence. Stay in his presence. Stay with him. Hallelujah. Oh, sing another song. Hallelujah. Worship him a little more. It's not hard. Anybody can do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can go in your car and sing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You might have been hard hearted about something that somebody offended you, but saturate in the presence of God. Oh, your faith might be dry and dead in yesterday, but today there's a fresh anointing. There's a saturation in his presence. Hallelujah. You don't have to try. You just saturate. You get right in the water. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then you're just dripping. Everywhere you go, they're anointing is flowing. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on, is it true? You get full of the Holy Ghost, you just you don't care what the public people think about you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then you come on somebody, they really need help. God will give you a good squeeze and they'll say, ah, speak the word to that person. Come on. <laughs> Come on, they, they're messed up. They need some help. Hallelujah. Just let the hand of God come upon you. Just begin to squeeze that water out. Hallelujah. Come on, the living water from the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then you can walk. <laughs> and then you're useful. You're useful. Praise God. So we're just talking about being filled and staying filled and saturated, drinking. Hallelujah. Your body needs water. Your brain needs water. Hallelujah. The church needs the water from the Holy Ghost. You can put it down. But what we're going to do now is just drink. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul said in first. Corinthians 14, I will pray in the spirit. I will pray in my understanding. And then he did this. I will sing in the spirit. I will sing with my understanding. So we're going to do some singing because something about singing, it just comes, it bypasses your mind so much. Just let it come right out of your heart. Don't think about what you're singing. Just let the sound come up. And you know what? <laughs> Do we have that picture? Yes. Can you throw up that picture? <laughs> so this is what came on the day of Pentecost. <laughs> it's it's liquid God. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 It changed natural people into supernatural people. It's doing it now. Hallelujah. Let's be like they were on the day of Pentecost and let's just open up our mouths. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, open your mouth wide for the latter rain. Hallelujah for supernatural. Open up your mouth. Why don't you just lift up your hands to heaven? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Speak with tongues. Change Lift up your voice. There's a fresh outpouring. There's a fresh outpouring from heaven.
saturate me in your anointing. Saturate me in your presence. Got to have more. I've got to have more of your anointing in my life. Saturate me, oh Lord, today. Let's sing that. Let's sing it to Jesus. Saturate me in your anointing. Saturate me in your presence. Saturate me in Gotta have more. I've got to have more of your anointing in my life. Saturate me today. Come on, that healing is coming up higher and higher. Destroy sorrow. 
praise God. The gift of God. Let's say that. The gift of God is activated when I am saturated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Woo! Anything's possible. Glory to God. Praise God. At any time, Smith Wigglesworth said, when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you can have any gift of the Spirit, revelation, the latest revelation. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Are you ready? Let's just shout. Hallelujah. 